Hey guys, I wanted to walk you through a uh, quick how to get starting uh, started with uh, SCSS with a uh, .NET Core app or a Blazor WebAssembly or server side app. Um, and secondly, just show you how you can use uh, SCSS to loop through and make a bunch of classes so you don't have to hard code um, a bunch of classes. Um, it's important to make um, classes uh, or CSS classes in a separate file um, uh, due to CSP or content security policy, which um, tends to shy away from the security risk of doing inline styles or um, unsafe inline or unsafe eval. So if you want to get a, um, a plus rating or um, a rating on securityheaders.io or just comply with a lot of the web security standards here, you want to do everything in files. So, uh, or, you know, um, not in line. Um, and one of the challenges is if you have to, um, let's say you had a, a, a CSS class and you just wanted to add, you know, width 50 on it. It's kind of a, a pain to, to go and write a class for that because, um, for every little tiny thing you want to move around the web page very like incrementally you got to write a class so um it's um tedious and annoying so hopefully what i'll show you here today will kind of ease up on on that and, and provide a little flexibility and um, modularity to to using um sas loops and whatnot so i have just a uh, .NET core blazer um, server-side application, just a boilerplate from .NET Core 3.1.3. Uh, um, and I have Web Essentials uh, 2019 installed. Um, so other than that, fairly vanilla setup. So what I'm going to do is add my first uh, SAS file. So go into triple W root. Um, just give a new folder. And this is a feature of um, um, Web Essentials 2019 is add an empty file, which I find is useful. You don't have to go through the um, add new file menu and search for the one you're looking for. At the end of the day, you just need something with an extension created, right? So I'm going to go add um, new empty file. This is the uh, Web Essentials 20, 2019 thing. So I'm going to say <clears throat> site dot scss and um i believe if i just do my class width let me just see if this is compiling right out the gate if i click save nope so what you can do with the web essentials um 2019 2017 as well. You can right click web compiler and go to um, compile file. And it adds a couple files here to know how to hook it up. And you'll see that like this is generated and this is the minified file is generated. But now if I let's say close all but this and I'll just change this to 150 and look down here when I click save this is compiling and if we go into the different levels 150 and 150 so pretty handy um, for compilation so <clears throat> first thing we want to do here is go into the main uh, layout and actually no it's the one higher which is nope host right host is our actual uh razor not not blazer razor but the the c s h d m l so i'm going to add a an import here and in 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 uh in dot net core applications some other applications you can use the uh the tilde which will map to the root um, while you're while you're writing your code, and then at 
runtime or compile time will actually find the right path. So it ends up writing like this. Um, but yeah, so I can write it like this. I'll go like this. And there's no harm doing the minified version. Anytime you make a change to the SAS file, it's going to compile it anyway. So you might as well use the minified one. So we got a reference there. Um, we'll click save, get out of that. Um, and right now, it doesn't do much. We got one thing called my class. So let's get rid of that. I have um, code on the clipboard here. And I'll walk you through what, you know, how, how, how you can create loops and, and how easy it is to make these things, right? So um, I'm saying that the, 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 the number of times I want to loop through this max pixel is I'm going to loop from, um, from this variable from one through to the max. So it's going to go run 10 times. In here, it creates a variable. So it takes that one up, uh, up here, which is the, the, the iterator, and then times it by 100. So if it's going to start from 1, it's going to be um, 100, 2 times 100, 200, and so on and so forth. So we, let's just say we're on loop increment number 5. This is going to say five. this variable here is going to be 500. It's going to do this 10 times, and it will make some classes here. And when you see the the hashtag and curly curly, that's string interpolation in in SAS. Um, so it's saying make app min h dash the number that it is. So it's going to make dash 100, dash 200, and whatnot. So the point of this is you don't necessarily want to make all of these max width classes, min width classes, but you would have to write them all by hand and whatnot. But this is just a quick loop um, um, using a mix-in. And then you just have to write this line down here that says include, which essentially runs the mix-in. Um, so this is using a for loop uh, with a variable up here at counter, and it's going to make these classes. So if I run this, I'll just click save. It says compiling. So let's look at what I actually got created. This is such a time saver. Look at this. This is uh, 120 lines of code. Um, so it's saying, you know, app max width thousand and it and you see what it did max with a thousand we just go back there i didn't spend too much time on it there but i did the name but so max width um so at max width dash you know let's say a thousand and then it just takes the interpolated part of that so the string of it and then adds px on the end so very good time saving and now since you have this and we can close these and that was just writing a simple loop to make a bunch of classes. Um, and if we go back to, let's say, our host file, um, let's say, for example, I want to add a, let's just, actually, let's, um, let's, let's just add a, a div down here. We're going to say um, class. And this has boot like the standard .NET Core templates have Bootstrap 4 built in, so you should be able to access some of those classes. I'm going to say bg, let's say um, info, and now we're going to say max, sorry min, sorry app. See, look at all these classes now, right? App min height, uh, let's say 200. I'll say app um, min width uh, let's just say this and hi i'll put an h1 in it hi okay so let's save that go ahead and run it and like i said the point of the csp and content security policy is to try to eliminate inline styles and have it all in a um a a file, right? Um, an external file um, that is hopefully protected by a nonce or a or a hash, um, so you can't just inject your own scripts and styles. Um, <clears throat> so there it is, right? Um, obviously, it looks awful, but you get the general idea how easy it is to write tons of styles um, using loops. So. Um, 
I'll include this part in the in the YouTube uh, video description if it helps people. Um, and if anyone has any other suggestions for any obscure parts of um, .NET or Microsoft or web development, Xamarin, Blazor, WebAssembly that they'd like to see more videos on, um, please leave a comment. Um, it would be great. Thanks.